My great-grandmother, Dagmar Florence Wickland, was born on November 12, 1917. Her parents were Sophie and Gunnar Wickland. When my great-grandmother was very young, her mother was taken, along with more than 50 million other people, by the Spanish influenza epidemic. She was given to a foster family, as it was not considered proper for a single man to raise a little girl. Well, my great-grandmother grew up and left the house. One of her first jobs was as a maid at the Snyder Mansion in Minneapolis, Minnesota. The Snyders were an aristocratic family and lived in a very large mansion. My great-grandmother enjoyed working there very much and has many stories from her time there. We got a chance to sit down and record some of my great-grandmother's stories, and I would like to share them with you. Try it on. You want to see how she looked in that beautiful dress. And who is this? Elsa. Elsa. The youngest one, yeah. And, and uh, I don't know if she took her, her uniform off, but uh, I suppose she did it in, in the room where there was mirrored doors. She was three of them, so you could see every angle. <laughs> she was ten. She had that dress on, and then she put that stole on it. She, she looked like a doll, you know, in that thing. And she had her hair fixed, like she always did, but it was cute. And, oh, it was so beautiful, you know. And Mrs. Snyder come walking in. <laughs> if there had been a hole in the floor, I'm sure Elsa would have crawled in it. <laughs> Can't you imagine? <laughs> in her dress. In her dress, yeah. And, and I, yeah, uh, Mrs. Snyder looked at her, looked at her. But Mrs. I am so sorry. Oh, I am so sorry. But I just had to try it on and see how it was looking on me. <laughs> how, that, <laughs> how that dress would look on me. It was so beautiful. And it fit her to a T, you know. Mm -hmm. Another story from my great-grandmother was of when Elsa's sister, Nancy, decided they should try sliding down the banister while Mrs. Snyder was gone. When my great-grandmother slid down, she accidentally knocked over a lamp and its light bulbs broke. She cleaned it up in time, though, and luckily the lamp still worked. Well, my great-grandma had many good times at the Snyder's and has always kept good memories of it. But after a year of working there, she decided to marry Vernon Johnson and start a family. She brought back many good memories of her time there and always wanted to go see it one last time. This winter, we got a chance to fulfill her wishes. This February, we went to the Snyder Mansion with my great-grandmother. Even though parts of the mansion were altered, it still had much of its original charm and beauty. Going back to the mansion brought back many memories from my great-grandmother. When she shared them with the family, I discovered a significant connection to a famous event in history. Mr. and Mrs. Snyder, my great-grandmother's employers, honeymooned in Europe. When their trip was finished, they would come back to the U.S. by ship. Their original ship was held up, so they decided to board the Titanic. Now here is the story from Nellie herself. I was on the Titanic a good many years ago. We were, uh, had been in Europe and we were coming home and we happened to leave from Southampton and we went to find out what boat we were going to be on and see if our reservations were all made. <clears throat> we were told that the, uh, we were going to be put on the Titanic and it was going to go on its maiden voyage. 
Well, I wasn't very happy about that because I didn't want to go on any ship in this maiden voyage. And they said, oh, mercy, it's world-renowned. It's going to be, and you just want to be on that ship, and it's the most beautiful thing. I said, thank you, no, I don't want it. I'm, I wouldn't go on a maiden ship uh, voyage for anything. But we finally consented to go. The send-off was so marvelous, and everybody was so gay, and we were having such a good time, and champagne all over the place, and it was beautiful, really. And we were out about three days, and it was a beautiful boat. If you can see the picture of it, it was the biggest boat ever built, I think. We were only on three days when, in the middle of the night, we heard a terrible crashing and a terrible noise and sounds as if the whole ship had been torn open. And uh, so we got up and went outside and asked the steward what the matter was, and he said, oh, nothing, we just grazed an iceberg. And uh, we said, well, we want to see, we'd like to see an iceberg. And uh, he said, oh, no, you go back to your room. You, everything's all right. It'll be, everything will be all right in a few minutes. So just don't worry. But we did. We went up on the deck. And uh, we went up on deck, and we could see that the plenty had happened. The, pl the front of the boat was just filled with ice. We stayed there and watched for a while. and. Pretty, some people kept coming out from the other decks, and, and they were so frightened they didn't know what to do, and people were running around. So I finally stood, and I looked over for a while. Finally, I saw one porthole go under. I thought, oh, dear, it's really going to tip over him. And so we uh, finally, they did allow people to come up on the upper deck, the boat deck, and they said um, they wanted people to get in. Women and children could get in the lifeboats and be lowered. Well, of course, women and children didn't want to go without their husbands and not their fathers or without, they weren't going to get in and nobody would. And uh, so there were eight brides and grooms that we were together, together all the time. So finally they came and asked us if we wouldn't go in. We said, no, we wouldn't go without our husbands either. And they said, well, your husbands can go if you'll just show these people that the boat is perfectly safe, and if they get in it and they're lowered, then they can row away, and by that time everything will be cleared up, and the Titanic will be righted, and everything's all right. So none of us wanted to, but they finally, I think I was the first one. So we finally got down, and they cut us away, and then they said, now row as fast as you can, and get out away from the boat, because if the boat sinks, there'll be such a suction, it'll just draw you right down. So we rowed, we rowed, we tried to row at least. By that time, about 12,000 people had jumped in the ocean. And then we discovered that the, uh, that the water was coming in because nobody put in the plug. So here we were sitting in ice water up to our knees. And then we thought, well, of course, we'd bail it out because we were bailing as fast as we could and throwing icy water out. Well, pretty soon uh, we found it. So we <laughs> plugged it up and start rowing again. And then all of a sudden it took a big dive and went down and you never saw another thing. But it went down just as gracefully, as a, just like a fish, just as quiet. And we just hated to see the end of that boat go. What started out as a 4-H project turned into an adventure for my whole family. I learned a lot from working on this video and I've worked really hard on it. Not only did I learn more about the Titanic, but I also learned the story of my family. From the tragedies, like Sophia dying at a very young age, and my great-grandma going to live in a foster family, but also the good times, like sliding down the banister and getting caught trying on Mrs. Snyder's clothes. Life has its ups and downs and twists and turns, but we survive it. My great-grandma never thought that she'd be able to go back to the mansion, but she did. And the Snyders thought they were going to die in the Titanic, but they didn't. Life is definitely unpredictable, but it's an adventure. And that is part of what I wanted to illustrate in this video. I hoped you liked my video production.